Chain attacks in Xenoblade 3 work entirely different than they did in previous games, and it can be a difficult system to understand and have a grasp of. In this video, I want to discuss chain attacks in great detail, hopefully explaining every single mechanic and option you have available because there is a lot you can do and a lot to talk about. If you have a good understanding, you can hit some pretty crazy numbers like this. After all my explanations, I will be providing an example at the end of the video of my favorite chain attack party setup in order to maximize damage. If you enjoy or appreciate guides like this and want to see more Xenoblade 3 content covering a lot of other gameplay features, please subscribe to the channel because it really does help me out so much. Let's get into this! So, first things first, in order to use a chain attack you need to fill up the circular gauge on the right side of the screen. I do not know all of the exact ways to fill this in as of yet, but using combos like break, topple, launch, daze, and so forth along with using fusion arts will help fill it. I think doing roll actions helps and getting critical hits could also have an effect. There are also accessories that increase the chain attack gauge gain either by getting critical hits or by using arts, and one of the hero classes also has a passive skill that does this as well. Regardless, it shouldn't be too hard to fill just by executing everything properly and your 6 AI partners will help out as well. Now, the fun begins once the gauge is fully filled. Once filled, you can start a chain attack at any time by pressing the start button. I would highly advise not pressing it unless all of your characters are currently alive, and if you do when some are dead, make sure you know you're going to get the kill. Another thing is that you can chain attack while an enemy is toppled, launched, or dazed. Launch is the best of these because it will actually freeze the launch and get the damage bonus from attacking a launch enemy the entire chain attack. Now once you are in a chain attack itself, you will notice a few things. Firstly, you will get to choose one of three different chain attack orders. Now what is a chain order? Essentially, a chain order is what you are working towards each round of a chain attack. If you are able to successfully complete a round with your selected order, the character will attack the enemy with a special move based on the weapon they currently have equipped, and the completion bonus for the order will be applied to all subsequent rounds of the chain attack. This means that the completion bonus is bypassing defense, like from Noah, all attacks the rest of the chain attack will bypass defense. If it says it lowers either or physical defense a certain amount, that applies the rest of the chain attack. The completion bonus does not apply on the round you pick it. You have to complete the round to get the bonus. The completion bonuses for the six main characters is always the same. Noah has a chance for attacks to bypass defense, which eventually reaches 100%. Uni lowers enemy ether defense a set amount, and it seems to go into negative numbers based on my testing, which makes ether attacks hit even harder. Tyon does the same, but for physical attacks. Senna gives you a chance to bypass enemy block rate with attacks. Mia will decrease aggro on healer and attack classes, which is really only useful if you don't kill the enemy, and Lons will increase defender aggro and give the entire party an attack up buff. Additionally, all of the hero characters have their own different completion bonuses for chain attacks should they pop up, and since there are so many, I won't be going over all of them here, but there are a lot of strong effects among the hero classes that will give you much greater odds of success, and I want to show off at least one later. One thing to note is sometimes it can be worth it to pick a less useful completion bonus if you're selecting someone currently in an attacker class in order to get a stronger special move at the end of the round. The three options you have are unfortunately random, which can be a little frustrating at times since the wrong selection of characters can ruin a perfect strategy. Regardless, there is plenty you can do with any setup of characters to have successful chain attacks. After picking your Brave Order for the round, you'll notice the damage multiplication percent which is in the bottom right and this number just showcases what the damage of the art or special used will be multiplied by. At the start, it's only 50% more damage, but things can start to stack quickly. From there, you'll see this your selection of characters in the bottom left. You will see a number above their head. This number refers to tactical points. In the top right of the screen, there is a bar for these tactical points that starts off at 0% every round. In order to complete a round of a chain attack, you need to fill this to 100%. The purple number above the character's head is their base tactical points. This is constant for every single character in every chain attack, no matter what role. Tyan will always start with 35, and Senna will always start with 15, and so on. By hovering over a character and selecting one of their arts, that character's base tactical points will be added to the bonus tactical points obtained from doing the art, and then that number will fill up in the meter in the top right. You gain bonus tactical points from a number of different things like total damage, hit count, not being guarded while doing the attack, and other things. To simplify this, basically using an art will increase that character's current tactical points and add that number to the top right. The exact specifics honestly do not matter that much. The character cannot be selected again for the rest of the round. 
It is worth noting that all arts chosen in a chain attack will automatically be fused arts to be as strong as possible and will also automatically apply any positional effects regardless of where you are actually standing. So if an art increases damage from behind, you will get that increase even if you are in front of the enemy. This can make positional arts pretty strong options for chain attacks. Depending on the role of the character selected in a chain, there is a certain bonus. If an attacker uses the first attack of the round, the total TP they have at the end of the art will be multiplied by 125% before being added to the tactical point meter. There's also a first blood bonus for attacking first, which will give these attackers even more TP. You do not have to use an attacker first if you don't want to, and sometimes this may be beneficial. Before I talk about the tank and healer bonuses, I should explain a bit about the tactical point system. To complete a round, you need to get over 100 TP, as stated. However, the way you can get over 100 TP can matter a lot. You can use as many characters in a round as you want, but if you ever pass the 100 TP threshold, the round will end right there and the character with the Brave Order will use their special move. If this happens, you'll get one of the characters that has used an art back in the next round. Only one though, so you can run low on characters quickly if you're not careful or didn't plan correctly. The damage ratio will also increase to 250% for the next round. If you can manage to get over 150 TP, you'll be granted a Bravo rating, which will increase the damage ratio further and give you two characters back that have previously been used. If you can manage to get over 200 TP, you'll be granted an Amazing rating, which increases the damage ratio even further than that, and you will get three characters back. Any TP gained past 200 will help increase the damage ratio further, but there are no ratings beyond Amazing. Let's talk about the healer and tank bonuses now. The bonus for using a healer class is that the gained TP will hard cap itself at 99 on the gauge. This means you are one point shy of completing a round, but also in the best position to try to get a higher rating. The bonus for the tank class is that if you finish the round with the tank, you are guaranteed to at least get back the character with the highest TP. If an attacker finishes the round, it will be random instead. Any characters you get back will have their new TP values carry over into the next round, making it easier to get back a full gauge again. There is also a TP bonus for using a role in a chain attack that matches the role of the Brave Order. The role of Brave Orders is based on the default roles of the character, so Noah is always going to be attack, Launch is always tank, and Uni always healer, and so on for the Agnes characters. This can be helpful in strategizing your TP gain as well, and can be worth paying attention to when selecting your Brave Order. A very standard chain attack setup would just have an attacker go first, a healer next, and then a tank to finish your round. With just the 6 default party members, you are unlikely to get a Bravo or Amazing rating in the first round without a skill or accessory to increase starting TP, or by having Tyon on a tank or attacker class that matches the role of the Brave Order being used, since with 35 he should be able to reach it in that case. But getting Amazing with just the 6 main characters in round 1 is probably going to be impossible. But, hero characters can also join in and attack in chain attack rounds. Hero characters will not get the role bonuses like the six main party members, so that is very much worth remembering so you don't accidentally use a healer class hero and go over the cap when you don't want to. However, heroes all come with their own bonuses for attacking, which can drastically affect how chain attacks go. Once again, there are too many to discuss all of them, but many have quite strong effects that can make your chain attacks way more likely to succeed. Be sure to pay attention to these bonuses and use them wisely. In the next round of a chain attack, it should be easier to get a Bravo or even Amazing rating because you should at least have one character back with higher TP, probably one of your attackers. Assuming you have two attackers, it can be a good time to pick Noah or Senna's Brave Order to give attackers a TP bonus for the round. You can start this round with the other attacker, then get to 99 with a healer if possible, and then use the attacker used on the first round to basically guarantee at least a Bravo. Any newly gained TP this round will once again be added to the total, and this can compound for characters attacking in multiple rounds. Finishing with an attacker will mean that two of the characters you get back are random, but you'll also get a higher damage ratio and two characters back means at least one extra source of TP. If you're using an appropriate bonus hero, hopefully you can get good ratings easily at this point without sacrificing too much. Typically a strong start to a chain attack will compound itself as you will continue to get additional characters back with higher and higher TP. However, this can also be dangerous because using characters with high TP can easily go over the cap with only one or two attacks which is detrimental to the chain attack as a whole, so make sure you're paying attention to the numbers and being careful. You don't want to accidentally end the round with only like 100 points because you ended up using one character that has way too much TP. It is not always best to use a higher number. So when does a chain attack end? Well, there is one of three ways. The first is failing to reach 100 tactical points in a round. 
The second is having your gauge fully deplete in the bottom right. And the third is manually ending it yourself with a start button. The first and third should be self-explanatory, so let's talk about the gauge. Anytime you use a Brave Order with one of the six main characters, one third of the chain attack gauge will be depleted. If you use the Brave Order of a hero, the gauge will not be depleted at all. This means that you can have up to four rounds of a chain attack with a singular exception I know of being one hero that actually restores the gauge as part of their Brave Order. If done well, the final round or two should be pretty strong and heavy damage to enemies. There is one final, very important feature to chain attacks you unlock a little bit into the story, and that is Ouroboros Orders. Ouroboros Orders work a little bit differently and can be activated in two different ways. The first way is by getting up to interleague level 3 with one of the pairs, transforming into the Ouroboros, and initiating the chain attack while playing as that pair. This will instantly give you a higher damage ratio than usual and lets you use an Ouroboros Order, which gives you a much more powerful special move than usual at the end of the turn. After the first round, you will then be able to use a second Ouroboros form for another round. Additionally, all characters used will return for this round no matter what, and you will get another big damage increase. After the second round is concluded, the chain attack will end in this case. It can be a quick strong burst option, but the other method will still give you more damage, typically if you are executing properly since you'll have a lot more rounds. The second method is using a chain attack normally and then using two Brave Orders from the same Ouroboros pair. So let's say if you use Noah's Order round 1, and then you use Mio's Order round 2, you'd be able to use one of their Ouroboros forms for round 3. Using an Ouroboros Order will instantly restore all characters in this case as well, and using an Ouroboros will end the chain attack even if you still had Gage. Fortunately, the rounds you use the two orders in do not matter as long as you use both. You can use Noah round 1 and Mio round 3, Mio round 2 and Noah round 3, and even Noah round 1 and Mio round 4. Now you may be wondering how it works if 4 is the maximum number of rounds. Well, that isn't entirely true. If during the 4th round, or 3rd if you don't have a hero character, you use the second character of an Ouroboros pair and successfully complete the round, you will get the option to do a 5th round with that Ouroboros order. As before, all characters will be returned to you for this round no matter what, and this will give you the highest damage possible. Five rounds is essentially the maximum for chain attacks, but you can do some massive damage if executed properly. Always try to aim for these five round chain attacks, and more often than not, you'll probably kill whatever you were fighting. If my explanations are still a little confusing to you, or I just simply talk too fast, which I often do, I want to walk through an example or two and kind of guide you through both my thought process and some strong strategies for chain attacking that might be able to help you out. I've been able to hit over 17 million at only level 81 without max accessories or classes yet. I will say this next section will talk about some hero characters and feature some weapons you may not have seen yet, so if you consider that spoilers, please be careful in the next part. So firstly, I think probably the strongest hero character for chain attacks is Ashura. I would recommend anyone struggling with chain attacks to try to use her for a bit once you unlock her. It's because her bonus when attacking in chains and her Brave Order are extremely strong effects. Her attacking bonus is that if she finishes a round, you will automatically be assigned an amazing rating at the cost of her being unable to be used in the chain attack again. That is no problem though because getting an amazing rating on round 1 is massively beneficial to the chain attack as a whole. You can use 3 characters round 1 before Ashura and are guaranteed to get all 3 back. This basically gives you all the TP you need to ensure 5 rounds no matter what order setup you get. Speaking of which, if you see Ashura's Brave Order, use it. Her completion bonus will automatically raise the damage ratio by a pretty sizable amount, and she will give the entire party Power Charge for the next round. Power Charge is a buff effect that will give a large increase to the damage of your next art. In Chain Attack, this only multiplies how strong your arts are further as you can imagine. And for some real craziness, you can combine this with a Signifer Healer class, and you can even bring two of them if you want to get some really high damage. The main gimmick of the Signifer class is that it shares its buffs with the entire party, and it currently has Power Charge, which counts as a buff. You may be able to see where I'm going with this, but let's just get into an example so you can see it live. You may not have access to Asher or chose to skip her side quest, and if you did, there are st still plenty of strong hero characters to use as well, so keep that in mind if you're following this, because you can still get all five rounds with any of the heroes. So, first things first, I obviously am going to launch the enemy to get a damage bonus during the chain attack. You can accomplish this very easily by using Lanz's um, special move with the Zora Boris as Talon Art. And then with this initial order setup, I want to immediately select Asher because it's going to be the absolute best option. 
I can get three characters back this round if I finish this round with Ashura as well, and I get a guaranteed amazing rating, which is fantastic. I can use both of my attacker classes here in order to get a very strong start to the damage and increase their TP. And then I can finish this off with a healer who is never going to go past 99 because of the cap limit. And then I'm just going to finish with Ashura. She might not be able to be selected the rest of the time, but that doesn't really matter. Her damage is not great. You're using her for her effects only. No matter what TP she gets, she's going to hit 200 for the heroic chain. And this is going to increase your damage ratio to 600% if you have her completion bonus, because you have 200 extra damage ratio there. And everyone now has power charge, so their attacks now deal even more damage. Uni is going to be the best choice to do in here, because we don't want to use the Noah yet, because um, we gain extra TP with attacker classes, and that would put us in danger of um, going over the tactical point limit by using just Uni there. So, now that Uni has used her power charge, Tyon and Senna, who are both Signifer class, can use this ability to pass their buffs to people, and Uni's going to get that power charge right back, as you just saw there, which is incredibly stupid. So, I do the overkill with Noah there in order to make sure I get a Bravo rating. The characters I get back are going to be random, but I'm going to be guaranteed to get at least one of my two DPS back, which is really all I need at this point. So, we're just going to take advantage of all the extra damage we get. And now the Aether defense of the enemy is even lower, so I'm going to be able to do a lot of extra damage with Uni as well if I'm able to use her arts because she's an Aether attacker. I use Mio here because I want to go for the Noah Ouroboros finisher because it's the most powerful one, especially if you've got like a bunch of the really strong skills with him. I start off with Mio here because starting with Uni would have put me over the 100 threshold, so I want to save her for the end of this one. And I use Tyon here to repass the um, power power charge to, to everyone that doesn't have it. So Senna has it back now, as you can see. And Uni also has it, so she's going to be able to do a lot here. I get really unlucky and hit 198 because I didn't get a bunch of extra abilities there. Ideally, Noah would be round 3, so you can guarantee get 200. But I was just slightly unlucky there. And then I get even more unlucky here where Noah's not even an option. So because of that, I end up having to choose Tyon to get an Ouroboros finisher since I used Uni earlier. Mio was the other one I used, and since I don't have Noah, I cannot possibly get his finisher or Mio's finisher. So this was the only option I had. Because of that, I am a little unfortunate in the fact that I passed the power charge back to Tyon. But since Tyon is going to use the special at the end of the round... He is going to lose his power charge, so I'm not going to be able to pass it during the next round. Which is unfortunate, because I could have gotten even more damage from that as well. I hit a, another 198 here, because my characters I have back were just kind of in an unfortunate order to get over 200 again. So, that is another time that I got a little unlucky with this. Fortunately, the Ouroboros Chain Orb is going to get everyone back. If Tyon still had his power charge, if I was able to select Noah last round, I'd be able to use him here to pass power charge back to Uni. But since Uni doesn't have power charge, I end up using Noah instead as my DPS this round, because power charge is just that worth using. Even if um, the damage of Noah is typically a little bit lower with the setup I currently have now. So Tyon gets us to the 99 cap. And I go ahead and choose Noah, I believe, here. Actually, I use Senna, because she's not going to go over the 99 cap. Might as well take the extra damage. <laughs> that makes sense. And then Noah is going to use the most powerful art he has. And as you can see, I hit over 2 million damage with that singular hit there. I also hit some other attacks over a, mil a million earlier. I think with one of Uni's last attack, one of the attacks was over a million. And we're going to hit over a million again right here with the Ouroboros Order. So, the damage cap is removed in this game compared to Xenoblade 2, which was capped at under 1 million. Fortunately, that is not the case in this game, so you can hit some really, really crazy damage numbers, as seen by the end of this chain attack where I hit over 17 million without even getting the best possible luck. If I was able to do some of the orders that I wanted to do here, got Noah's Brave Order, if I was able to get over 200% for the amazing bonuses on the times I got 198, if I didn't have to use Tyon's Power Charge up, there's just so many things. I didn't even get to use Noah's special move because I couldn't use his Brave Order either. That would have been a bunch of extra damage there. And I'm only level 81 right now, not even maxed. So I imagine at level 99 you can hit some really, really crazy things if you set up properly for it, and that is something I'm very much looking forward to doing. 
Well, I think that about covers it for this. Um, I don't want this video to go on too long. I hope my explanations and everything was able to teach you something and you're able to understand this pretty well at this point. If you enjoyed the video and are looking forward to more Xenoblade 3 guides and want to learn even more about the game, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below, follow me on my social medias down in the description, all that kind of stuff if you want to support me. I do really, really appreciate all of it. With all that being said, thank you all so much for watching and have a wonderful and blessed day.